Hi, this is Nicole Dyer, and in this video, you'll see Diana sharing about how to organize your DNA project files. And this question came in for one of our monthly Research Like a Pro with DNA Office Hours sessions. And the person wanted to know how to keep all of the files associated with their research project organized. Do you put them all in a folder? Is there some other way to index them? And where do you keep them? So tune in as Diana shares some ideas for staying organized with your DNA project files. And our first question is about organization. And this one is, how do you keep everything together? So for instance, um, this was, you know, we've got locality guides. And so um, the person who wrote, gave us this question said that she likes to keep them together by state and county. So that's fine. And then projects, uh, she keeps those all together, named by the primary person's name. But what about the citation spreadsheet? Where do you do with that? And what about all your different leads charts and your files from DNA GEDCOM, your match list charts that can be useful for many projects? So this was a great thought that some things should be filed together with a project, but some things can be useful for many projects. And I'm afraid they might get lost if filed away in the wrong folder structure. I have no problems with documents that are attached to one or many people in my genealogy program, but this has me stumped. So this is a great question because as we do more and more projects, we do acquire a lot of documents, a lot of information. So I'm just going to show you some ideas that I have and some things that I do, and maybe that will spark some ideas. And of course, everyone who's watching, feel free to put ideas in the chat. You know, that's the thing we love about office hours is we can all share our best ideas. So here is something that I do that I thought might be helpful. This is a little bit of my bookmark bar that I screenshotted and I have a bookmark for projects. And this is what I use whenever I start a new project. And in this bookmark, I have my citation template and I have a locality guide template, a project document template. You know, all those things that we give you as you're starting your project. I have a template, all those templates saved within projects. So I can just open that up and start opening those up. And you can have the Airtable base saved in there as well, a template to use. So that's one way that you can really easily find your citation template. I do have my citation template in Google Sheets. And so I use that on all my projects. So I don't keep that within one Airtable base because I use it across the board. And so it's really easy for me to go up and find it again super quickly. So that is one thing that I have really loved is having that bookmark for my projects and anything that I'm going to use multiple times. And then another thing that you could do is use one tab. I use one tab and perhaps you maybe would keep all your templates together in one tab. If you haven't heard me talk about one tab before, it's a, and it's a Chrome extension browser. I believe it works for some of the other uh, internet browsers as well. But when you have things open, like say 10 websites open, you click the little funnel for one tab and it puts them all together and saves them for you. So you can easily open them. So I do have one tab for several templates. For instance, my client templates that I work for client work, I have those saved in one tab and I have uh, one tab for my speaking contract. So, you know, that would be another place to keep all of those templates together. Or you could maybe just put them all in a Google Drive folder and have them all in one place. So that's an idea for corralling your citation template as well as some of these other items that you use whenever you start a new project. And then for DNA, we have a lot of information, a lot of data that we work with with DNA. So this is how I do it. I have a just a, a big folder called DNA within my Google Drive, so DNA. And then for each test taker, I have several test takers that I work with. I have a folder for them. So here's my DNA. And then within that, I have got all the different companies. So if I download my raw DNA from any of these companies or download different, um, whatever they will give me, chromosomes, whatever, it goes into that folder. And then within that folder, I have got all the breakdown. So here you can see 23andMe and I've got um, in common with files, match files, 
etc. all sorts of different things. And you can see these were all from 2019. So it's kind of old information, which is great because I can't really access that anymore. So this is one way that you can keep track of your DNA that has worked well for me to organize it like that by the test taker and then the different companies and then whatever you are getting downloaded. And of course, you could have a separate one. I've got GEDmatch here, but if you had something that was perhaps, you know, an additional company you wanted to put in here, like maybe a third party, you could do that as well. So that's an idea for that. Now for Lucidchart, this, I use Lucidchart, I don't use diagrams.net, so I'm assuming in diagrams.net you've got a similar structure for your folders. In Lucidchart you do have folders and you can create subfolders or you can put your different Lucidcharts, your diagrams within a folder. And so you could do folders for surnames or ancestral couples and then have your subfolders for additional diagrams. One thing you might want to do is really name your diagrams descriptively. And so you can see here that I've got a lot of Diana's close paternal matches by cluster. And these are not super descriptive. So every time I come to this, I kind of have to click on it and open it up and say, oh yeah, that's what that one is. So I probably need to go rename these and make them a little bit more descriptive so it's easier to find exactly what I'm looking for. And it does have a search feature in Lucidchart where you can search documents. So this can be helpful, but if you're like me, for instance, my, my maiden name is Schultz. So if I search for Schultz, it brings up a ton of different charts where I've got my name in there. So depending on how you've named things or, or what you're searching for, the search feature could be really helpful or maybe it's it's not as helpful. I think maybe the best thing to do is just have a really good names and then have a good folder structure for that. So that is a thought on organizing your information. You've got so much stuff that you have with these projects.